Welcome to the Be Circle Podcast. Together, let's be all God called us to be. Let's dive in. Hello, welcome to the V Circle. I'm glad you joined us today. We're so glad that you watch or listen, whatever platform you do that on. Thank you. Follow and like us. That helps us a lot. We're glad you're here today. Here with Breezy. I can't confuse you guys done set. I was going to go Breezy <laughs> Tisha, but it's Breezy Tisha. Hi, I'm Breezy. <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Breezy. This is Breezy. I know who this is. And Julie is off spending time with her family. She'll be back with us real soon. We miss Julie and we'll be glad for her to be back around the table. But we're here today. We're yeah. excited to be here. I am too. We've been having fun. We have been having fun. Not quite as much fun without Julie though. But Julie, she just brings the spunk to the table. She does. It's well, just And it's because she'll she'll say whatever without a filter. Oh, yeah, That's why knows it. That's I'm going to go ahead and say it, PA. I'm going to go ahead and say go it. Go ahead and say it. No, I would say what she says. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, can, you, you can judge me later. Yeah, you, I, yeah Bobby going to get me later. But, you know. <laughs> but we miss you, Julie. We'll be glad for you to be back. And I know that our listening audience, audience misses you, too. So hurry up. Love on those babies and get back home to the circle. But anyway, you know what? Life is good, isn't it? It is good. Life is good. But, you know, life wasn't always so good. No. Right. And uh, we just thought we'd talk about how we can go from surviving to thriving. It's good. And uh, I don't know about you girls, but probably the first, uh, I probably spent 10 years surviving. Yeah. 10 years of my life surviving and thinking that that was life. Yeah. Thinking that was the way things were supposed to be. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't know if you guys have ever been there, but I used to get up just to go back to bed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like that's how I coped and yeah. how I survived was um, sleeping because it just made the time time go by. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Mm-hmm. I would wake up to go back to bed. Yeah. I would get up to do what I had to do. But as soon as I could, yeah. I was back on the couch with a pillow and a blanket and the TV. What is it about when you're in survival mode? TV's your best friend. Um, I think it gives you a false reality of what you really want it to yeah. look like. I you know, because so you're watching TV and you're like, and then you get caught up in the moment. You're like, man, that's when I really want my life to look yeah. like. Because they make you believe that you're there. Yeah, you they know? do. Mm-hmm. I know. And that those are real characters. Mm-hmm. When in reality, they're not. It's a fantasy. Right. It is a fantasy. So. And I, I can remember, I had a friend one time when I was in my survival mode. I said to you guys before we started the podcast, you don't want to hang out with survivors. Right. No. Because they stay in a constant state of surviving. You're right. You know, they they get over one hurdle only to have another hurdle. Yeah. There's never a victory or a thriving that I woke up thriving, I'm going to bed thriving, I'm getting up tomorrow thriving, I'm going to thrive. It's always, how can I get through the day? Yeah. But I had this friend when I was in survival mode, and she was in survival mode too. And it was horrible because we would come together. She came to my house every single day. And we would come together and we would sit there and talk about how bad everything was. Yeah. Yeah. How bad everything was and how horrible everything was. And we couldn't wait for this to happen. And we couldn't wait for that to happen. And and then this is what we'd say. If this just happens, uh, I'll be the happiest person in the world. Well, when that would happen, you still weren't happy because you were still surviving. Yeah. Yeah. But she used to say, we used to watch Days of Our Lives. And I used to watch soap operas. <laughs> and I was hooked on Days of Our Lives. When I was in my survival mode, I think it used to come on at 1 o'clock. I don't know nothing about it now. But it used to come on at 1 o'clock. And I had kids. And I made sure that my kids were down for their nap. <laughs> so they had lunch. And they were in bed. So I could sit there and get engrossed in Days of Our Lives and what was happening with everybody. Well, and like, those people were surviving, too. They, they were. were. So, I mean, and it's nothing but drama. Yeah. Nothing but drama. Which is drama. Also Tell me that. By time. Yeah. He put but feet off her. My drama. friend would sit there and she'd go, oh man, if I could just be married to John Black. <laughs> and she'd just go, while he's oh. sleeping with another while one. While he's sleeping with another one. <laughs> if I could just be married to John Black, well then I'd get to thinking and I'd think, no, I love my husband. I don't think that about my husband. Yeah. But I'd get to think because I was in a horrible, horrible marriage. And I used to think, 
yeah, if I could just be married to Roman, wow. You know, so you get to think in these things. And so she would come over every day with a new dream she had about John Black. Every day she was having dreams about John Black because she was in survival mode. Fantasy, you said it, fantasy looked engaging to her. It was like, you remember the old commercials, you guys might not because I'm so much older than you. But you remember the old commercials that would be like, Calgon, take me away. Yes. I remember, remember no. that. You remember those? No. If I could just get in the bathtub with the bath salts and I can just be taken away I from all of this. You didn't remember I have never, never seen that one. I'm going to have to go on YouTube and look it up. Do they even <laughs> make Calgon anymore? I don't know. Have you guys ever seen it at the store? No, I don't even know what that time. is. It's a bath oil or bath. You know, it was like. It's like bath powder. Yeah. And you'd put it in your bath. It'd turn your bath pink. And the smell was so good. And they used to do this commercial. And they'd show this woman stepping into the bathtub. Like her day would be horrible. Her kids would be horrible. A horrible day at work. And she'd go home and she'd go, cow gone, take me away. And she'd get into the bathtub and everything. Just she had all these images and it was perfect and it was beautiful. Because cow gone took her away. Yeah. Well, that's the way me and my friend felt about days of our lives. For that one hour every day, we were out of our horrible life and into somebody else's horrible life. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I never even heard of that commercial before. You need to look it up on YouTube. I'm going to. Look up Absolutely. the Calgon Take Me Away commercial. <laughs> but what is sad to me is I went 10 years living like that. Yeah. Just surviving. Mm-hmm. You know, you would think, oh, oh I got to cook supper. Right. Dread supper. All I want to do is I want these kids to go to bed so I can get back in bed. Right. You know, want them to sleep. Oh, then, then you think, well, let me keep them up as late as I can so I can sleep later in the morning. Mm-hmm. And then I loved it when I was in my survival mode. I loved if it snowed or rained mm-hmm. because it was dark and dreary outside and yeah. it felt like the world stopped. Yeah. Wow. Because it always felt like life was just going on without me. Right. Everybody around me. I, I literally, in my mind, I felt like I was in a traffic, in California in traffic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just felt like everything was just, psh, 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 and I was just standing there stuck. Yeah. That's horrible. It's it's not a way to live. No. And, you know, I remember being in a season like that, too. And the Lord, when he speaks to me, I he just speaks to me black and white. And he told me to show you have to learn to find joy in the mundane. Mm. And, um, that took me a minute to get a grasp a hold of that because it's not easy to find joy in the mundane things when your heart is to be somewhere else or in the next season. Mm -hmm. Um, but I had to start going, Lord, thank you that you woke me up today. God, thank you that I can drive an hour to work. Thank you that I do have people at work that care about me and love me. Thank you for my family. When I started thanking and praising him, the joy started coming back into my life. And I got out of that survival mode because it's easy to stay there. Right? It is. And like I said, if you hang out with survivors, mm-hmm. yep. that, you know, and I didn't realize that I was be, I was proud. Oh, I survived that. Yeah. Who, yeah. I survived that. <laughs> but what did I really survive? Yeah. I just went from one place of complication to another place of complication. And I never will forget when everything was unraveling for me and I just knew I can't do this anymore and it's just it just went from bad to worse. But as I was studying one day and I was talking to the Lord, we all know John 10, 10, when the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And I believe the Amplified Bible says that you could live your life to the full. Yeah. And I realized at that moment I was not living life to the full. Yeah. Life was running over top of me. You know, I mean, look, girls, if you're having fantasies about John Black on Days of Our Lives, <laughs> something ain't right. E- either something is truly messed up in your mind or come on. Yeah. Right. It's true. Who does that? I mean, I couldn't imagine that now. I mean, if one of you guys were doing that, I'd say, you better stop. Right. You know, I- I'd be on you quickly. But it comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come that you might have life, that you might live your life to the full. When I started getting that revelation, I also began to realize something else. 
I was not surviving. I wasn't thriving because I was surviving spiritually too. Yeah. Yes. And when you're in a surviving spiritual state, you will not thrive naturally. Yeah. That's, that's good. good. That's really good. You have to be thriving in your spirit, man, because it was my spirit that was broken. That's why I was only surviving everything. I could not find joy in anything. Yeah. And as I began to realize that I needed the inside of me, my heart, I needed a heart change. I needed my heart to have a makeover. And when I started realizing that it, it was not my circumstances, it wasn't the people I was around. It wasn't what I had to do. It wasn't even the person I was living with. Yeah. It was my spirit. Yeah. And when I began to tune into the word of God, and I remember somebody said, and at the time I couldn't even have told you where it was, but when Paul said, um, in whatsoever state, whatever state of being I am in, I'm going to be content. And when I got a hold of that and I began to realize wherever I'm at, I can be content. Whatever's going on, I can be content. What, so, you know, think on these things, think on the good things of God, think on the good things that are happening in your life. And you can absolutely, if your spirit man gets built up, you can go from surviving to thriving in a bad marriage, absolutely, in bad finances, mm -hmm. in a, if you're attending a church you're not happy with, but you're not been released, you can still survive. I mean, still thrive. Uh, if your children are giving you all kinds of hell, you can still thrive. If the man of your spirit yeah. gives can still have peace. Because you can still have peace. Mm -hmm. Talk in that. Um, so I was thinking about it because when you're when you're surviving, it's just full of chaos. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was just sitting here thinking about um why the enemy wants us to operate and to live in a place of um just surviving. And it's because we become numb to our circumstances. Yes, we yes, numb, yes. And we even become numb in this in the spirit. Yeah. You know, we've like, um, because when I was operating in um in a survival mode, I would even be numb to the presence of God for a moment because I was just so like, you know, like I was just so caught up in what I was dealing with. Um, but I had to like I had to shift my perspective because I wasn't focusing on the presence of God, mm -hmm. you know, because the presence of God was still there, you know, mm -hmm. it was just what I was facing, what I was dealing with in that moment, um, because that's what the enemy tries to do. He tries to trick you mm -hmm. into thinking that you're numb to the presence yeah. of God when you're not. That's true. You know, and so um, and then when you shift that uh, mindset you are now operating um, not in a place of chaos, but in a place of peace. Peace. Because yeah, even true. though my circumstances may look kind of fuzzy and a little, you know, I'm no longer like, like for instance, in what um, I'm walking through right now, like it's chaotic, but I have peace in my heart. Amen. Because I'm not surviving. No. I'm going to thrive through this. But your spirit, man. Mm -hmm. So you built your spirit, man. Yes. Up. Yeah. And that makes a difference when our spirit is thriving. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It takes precedence over our flesh. Yes. It does. And whatever you focus on amplifies. So if you're focusing on the survival things that are happening, then that's going to amplify in your life. But if you're focusing on, no, God, even through this, I have peace. I'm focusing on you and your word. The word's going to amplify and take root and you're going to receive the harvest yeah. onto that. Yeah. And so every time, being careful what you focus on. I, I always, when I hear somebody, you know, who was it, sing that song, I'm a survivor, I'm a survivor, Reba. Oh, yeah. Reba on our uh, show. Yes. Uh -huh, yes. yes, I'm a survivor. Yes. And when I hear it, I'm like, it's got a catchy phrase, it's got a catchy tune, but I don't want to survive. I'm going to thrive. Yeah. And I thought, later change that to I'm a thriver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. how are you doing today? I'm thriving. Thriving. Yeah. 
You should start saying that to me. Yeah. How's your kids? They're thriving. Yes. That's right. How's your finances? They're thriving. That's right. Because I'm not, I'm not thinking about just how I'm going to get through the day. Yeah. I'm getting through the day. That's yes. right. I'm walking through the day with victory. I'm not thinking about going back to bed tonight. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I swear, I used to get up and I couldn't wait to go back to bed because then I didn't have to think about anything. Well, if you're going back to bed and the enemy is, is you know, trying to get you to feel numb to everything, you'll never fulfill your purpose. Boy, that's good. You'll never be all that God's called you to be. Right. You, know? yeah, you can, yeah. You can't. And it's it's just crazy how the enemy really tries to get us in that mindset. And um, But the Lord wants us to be confident and to thrive yeah. in, yes, you know, is. where we are so that because, you know, we're going through something for a reason. And yeah. so. so if you're listening or watching today, and you are getting lost in the fantasy of, let's see, Virgin River, Fire Country, oh. <laughs> Days of Our Lives. Uh, I don't know any more soap operas. I don't know what to call them. Um, what other shows? NCSI. <laughs> if you're getting lost in those shows and you're finding yourself, that is where you're getting your strength from, that you can just get lost and forget about your troubles for a moment. I want to encourage you to understand that it's a spirit problem. It's not a flesh problem. And if you can just find that place with God, find that place with him where you can cast all your care on him. And I was just cast all your care because he said, I care for you. Turn off the TV. If you're dreaming about John Black, girl, turn it off. Mister, if you're dreaming about Marlena, turn it off. You're too into it. You need to get out of that. Get into the word of God. Let the word of God cause you to thrive, cause you to grow, cause you, cause you to be stronger because God did not call you to survive. He called you to thrive. So ladies, how are we doing today? We're thriving. Thriving. We're thrivers. We're yes. thriving. Yes, yes, we are. Hey, we love you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. We appreciate it. Like and follow us, and we'll see you next time on The Bee Circle. Thanks for watching or listening to The Bee Circle. If this week's podcast helped you, or if you want to know more, please contact us at thebeecircle at gmail.com. Join us next week for more. Remember, be all that God's called you to be.